The Tensile Una, a compact, lightweight, one-person hammock tent that rivals the comfort of tents and hammocks in every way? Maybe. That's right, we're back with another tensile review. Why? Because we obviously couldn't get enough of their hammock-esque tree tents, and that's why. I mean, come on, just look at it. Do we even need another reason? In any case, we tested and reviewed the two-person tensile connect tree tent this summer and loved it so much, we had to figure out a way to get one for ourselves. But today, we're gonna be talking about Tensile's one-person tree tent, the Una. What's so special about it, how we liked it, and whether it's worth the space in your gear closet. First of all, a bit about the Una. It's Tensile's smallest, lightest, most packable, lay-flat hammock tent to date. It has a built-in zip-upable bug net, a rain fly, even a special sleeping pad pocket underneath to keep your sky pad insulated inflatable sleeping pad in place. There are three pockets inside, one on each corner by your head, plus a removable pouch and a gear net attachment underneath for stowing bulky gear like backpacks. And it's just the right size for one happy camper. How does it work? Kind of like a hammock, but also kind of like a tent. It hangs above the ground, like a hammock, obviously, except between three trees instead of two. That's what makes it slightly more tent-like. It lays flatter than a traditional hammock and offers a bit more elbow room, like a one-person tent, hence tree tent. You hang it using three included straps, which go around ideally three trees that form a tidy little triangle. Can't find a perfect triangle? Fortunately, Tensile's website offers several tips and videos for setting it up if trees are too close together or slightly misaligned or too far apart. You get it. Now, we won't go into every detail of how to set up the Una. Tensile does a perfectly good job of that on their website, but because the instructions that come with the Una are a bit, well, lacking, we'll walk you through the basics. First, make sure the trees you're using to hang it are alive, healthy, and strong, and at least 15 inches in diameter to ensure your body weight isn't going to damage the trees or uproot them. Then wrap the straps around the trees. On one corner, tie the strap through the ring using a half Windsor knot. You know, like you'd tie a tie. If anybody ties ties anymore? Then on one of the other corners, slide the strap through the web lock like so and pull it taut. On the last corner, slide the remaining strap through the ratchet and ratchet that sucker until everything is good and tight. Make sure you hang the straps at least weight to rib cage height so, you know, your butt doesn't scrape the ground when you get in. I like about collarbone height, personally. Then slide the aluminum pole into the sheath on the bug net and voila, hammock tent. If you're camping in cooler or rainy weather, you'll probably also want to attach the included rain fly, which will keep you nice and dry and the wind off your pretty little face. There's also this loop here that Tensile says you can attach another bungee to and tie it off on an overhead branch, but we don't usually recommend that sort of thing. You really don't want to bring a tree branch crashing down on you in the middle of the night. So if you're going to do that to give yourself a smidge more separation between the fly and the mesh, make sure to choose a super strong limb. After setup, all that's left is to get it ready for sleepy time. Toss in your sleeping bag and headlamp and whatever the heck else you want in the tent with you. And don't forget your sleeping pad in cooler temps because it'll help with that pesky convective heat loss, AKA cold butt syndrome. You can slide it in the special pocket underneath the Una designed for exactly this purpose, or because the sky pad has non-slip grips on both sides, you can also just toss it in the hammock with you and lay right on top of it, and it won't go anywhere. I actually prefer to do it that way, but to each her own. On that note, however, the co-branded Tensile Climate Sleeping Pad is pretty much the only sleeping bag that will fit in the Una. We were able to squeeze our rectangular climate sleeping pads in the two-person connect, but that hammock tent is a lot roomier. There was still some overlapping of the sleeping pad, but it worked. In the Una, however, it's just too narrow at the tail end. Some hammock-specific sleeping pads might work, but rectangular pads are pretty much a no-go. On the upside, the sky pad is insulated and those non-slip grips are actually pretty handy. After you get all your 
stuff sorted, just hop in. Don't worry, even if it looks too high, all it takes is a little weight and pressure and you can lower the edge enough to just pop right up in there. Then lay back, relax, and snooze away. Or open and tie up the mesh to create more of an open hammock experience. But you know, with less fabric wrapping you up like a cocoon. Pretty cool piece of gear, am I right? But what did we think of it and how does it actually function in the outdoors? First of all, we were surprised right off the bat that the setup was actually quite different than with the Connect, which had wider straps and larger ratchets for each corner. And despite having a fair amount of experience setting up that hammock tent, we did have a little trouble setting up the Una on our first time out with it. We consulted the manual that comes with the tent, but not gonna lie lie, the instructions weren't great. The video tutorials on Tensile's website are a lot better, by the way. We had a little trouble getting the levels right when the ground was terribly uneven, leaving the mesh net kind of sagging a bit when we climbed in. Now, there are tags that are meant to help you with that, with the alignment of trees and straps, but they're only moderately useful at best. The second time we set up the Una though, and then every time after that, it was a lot easier. Probably because we had watched the videos online and actually knew how to do it properly. You still have to remember how to thread it through the weblock and how to tie that Windsor knot, but after you do it a few times, should be a piece of cake, which I would love right now. Can someone bring me a piece of cake? As for zipper placement, we found it a little unusual. The zipper runs straight down down the middle on the top of the mesh, which is kind of odd. When you unzip it, the mesh just sort of collapses on top of you. It's the sort of thing you'd eventually get used to. It was just something we noticed and thought was weird. I was also a bit concerned about the width of the straps that go around the trees. They're only about one inch wide, which is the absolute thinnest that straps should be when you wrap them around a tree if your goal is to protect the bark and the delicate cambium layer underneath. And it should always be your goal to protect the bark and the delicate cambium layer underneath. You can purchase tree protector straps separately from Tensile, but that kind of defeats the purpose of the Una being a small, packable sleep system. In any case, we would have liked to see slightly wider straps, say an inch and a half, and better setup instructions in the kit. Setup aside, while the Una definitely packs up into a nice tight little package, really no bigger than our two-person Big Agnes Tiger Wall, in fact, it's not super duper light. Tensile may advertise it as a backpacking tent, but to be honest, it's a bit on the heavy side at just under four and a half pounds for a one-person setup. Don't get me wrong, it sure beats the previous generation, which weighed in about seven-ish pounds, but considering my Kamek Mantis backpacking hammock weighs under three pounds and the Tiger Wall two-person tent I just mentioned weighs two and a half, four and a half seems pretty dang hefty for one person. But I'm pretty small, and I tend to count ounces when I'm backpacking like my life depends on it. So if you don't mind a little extra weight, for a comfy space to sleep, go for it. Just don't expect an ultra light tent here. But what about actual use and comfort? Why pick the Una over any other hammock or even a tent? Well, for starters, it really is the best of both worlds. You're off the hard ground like in a hammock, which many people find more comfortable as there's little to no pressure on your back and shoulders and hips and whatnot. Personally, I love sleeping off the ground for that very reason. It's just so dang comfortable. And when you're camping in a rainstorm, slipping off the ground is the way to go. No chance your hammock is gonna get flooded here. But people who don't like sleeping in hammocks often say it's because they can't sleep if they're not laying flat or they don't like not having any elbow room or space to move around. Well, Tensile solved all of the above problems. You're off the ground on a sleeping surface that gives enough under your weight to be uber comfy, but not enough enough that you're folded in half like a banana or wrapped up in a burrito like you might be in a hammock. Plus, you still have plenty of space to wriggle around and store stuff inside the structure with you, even sit up and hang with friends. And there was a fair amount of storage space inside the Una. Corner pockets proved very useful, and I was even able to shove a few things down in the tail end by my feet. Bulkier items I stashed in the mesh pocket underneath the tent, and plenty else could be clipped to the straps outside 
ride via carabiners like shoes and stuff. The only thing I found frustrating was the little removable pocket pouch that seemed like it was meant to hang from these loops here, but when you do so, the pouch dangles right on top of your face. I tried moving it to different spots and found that it could attach to loops on the floor above my head, but it still didn't leave a lot of space between my person and the stuff inside the bag. There wasn't a lot of vertical head space either. In most tents and hammocks, you can sit up to sort of sort yourself and your stuff out, but even as small as I am, there wasn't much room to do much more than just prop myself on my elbows before my head hit the mesh netting. Once comfortably situated though, the Una was as comfortable as I expected. I slept comfortably and cozily in cool fall temps and felt entirely protected from the elements with the rain fly on. I did appreciate being able to stretch out my arms and splay kind of all over the place, back, side, stomach, which you can't usually do in a traditional hammock. I slept well, and when used as a hammock with all the mesh unzipped and tucked away, it's a supremely comfy lounge platform that really lets you interact with other campers, sit up and have a snack, even play games better than a traditional hammock. But who's the tensile Una for? Namely, people who find sleeping on the ground uncomfortable, but who don't really like hammocks either, who want something versatile and compact for lounging and camping, but maybe don't like the swaying motion of hammocks or the tight quarters. If, on the other hand, you crave a little more headspace or are a diehard ultralight backpacker, the Una may not be your best choice. Oh, and anyone who hates a comfortable sleeping and lounging surface should definitely steer clear. What do you think? Would you try out the Una? Have you tried out the Una? Let us know in the comments below. And we'll put a link to the Tensile Una as well as our review of the Tensile Connect below so you can check both of those out. And make sure to hit subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future gear reviews and outdoorsy updates. And come be friends with us on all of the social platforms. We are at TerraDrift on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And for even more sustainable and outdoorsy content, head over to TerraDrift.com where you can read destination guides, reviews, spotlights, and more. And as always, thanks for watching. Now go sleep in some trees and wander on. Look, I can do this. Don't laugh at me if I miss. Ready? Ha! Oh, I did it! Success! I did not tighten this enough. It's fine. It takes a couple practice runs. You know how it goes. It's cool. I mean, it'll even out when I lay down. Check it. Woo. Oh, oh, I went sideways. Nope, I didn't hang this well. Nope, I'm just gonna lay like this so it looks like I knew what I was doing when I hung this up because I don't want to undo it. <laughs> yeah, this is, I did not do this well. It's very comfy, very soft fabric. I can sleep in this. And I have, and I did, and I will again. Past, present, future tense. Geruns, geruns, uh, past participle. Now I'm just naming grammatical terms. Don't mind me, I'm a, I'm a writer, it's what we do. Just throw grammatical terms into normal conversation. Not weird. Not weird to have a grammar book in your, uh, in your glove box. Totally not weird. It's the thing normal people do. Normal intelligent people who are really into grammar. So don't judge me. I'm gonna get up now. Ta-da! I feel like I should do like a, when I get in and out, do like the, the gymnast thing where you go, oh, that's right. I am so good at this.